All right, so let's look at a continuous example of a semicircle of charge and trying to find the uh, electric field at the center of this charge. So we've started by drawing our sketch, and in our sketch step, we also want to draw tiny pieces that this charge is made up of. So we're going to draw kind of arbitrary slices. We don't want them to be at the edges. We don't want them to be at the center. And I very much suggest drawing two of them until we start feeling comfortable with it. So we want to draw our vector from each slice, or each slice is our agent, to point P, the recipient. If we want, we can draw this from kind of a side view, although it turns out it's not really that exciting in that way. But this gives us a chance and opportunity to make sure that we're defining everything in this way. In this case, this direction is the Z direction, this direction is the R direction. Much more usefully, if we draw it over here, this direction is the T direction, this direction is the R direction, and we could have, if we wanted, right, that this is the X and the Y. So we've got kind of an RTZ, but we're also showing ourselves an X and Y direction. So we want to start out by thinking of this in an RTZ thing because, right, it's very circular, and so we want a coordinate system that will so we can start in our organized step by defining our r vector as the distance that we have to go times the direction that we have to go. Well, from here to here, I have to go the radius of the circle, a distance r. And I can think of this in the x and y direction, but I can also think of this in the rtz, that I just need to go in the negative r hat direction. If I look over here, I also have to go the same distance r and I have to go in the negative r hat direction as well. So this is actually really, really nice, right? This defines r vector for both of these directions. I can very quickly do my Pythagorean theorems and things like that. I get, right, r squared is r squared, and my r hat is going to be negative capital R. So one of our definitions of negative capital r hat is I can also define r hat in terms of i hat and j hat, cosine theta i hat, plus sine theta j hat. How does this help me? Well, I have my differential electric field definition is 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught dq over r squared r hat. I've already found r squared and r hat in this way. I just need to find dq. My dq I can write as lambda times dl. And now I just need to think what's going on in this kind of length. And again, we know this is circular. So if it's circular, we want something like a circular piece of it. A circular piece of this is an arc length. And so looking up, we can say that the arc length is r times d theta. So now I have 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught. I have dq. I have r squared. I have r hat. So I can continue along with this. So I have 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught. My dq is lambda r d theta. My r squared is capital R squared. And my r hat is negative times cosine theta i hat plus sine theta j hat. Well, I can do some consolidation. One of the consolidations I can do is I can cancel a term of r. I can move this negative sign over, and I can kind of just make it look a little bit nicer. So let's do that for a second. So I have dE equals lambda, negative lambda, over 4 pi epsilon naught r. And then I have this cosine theta i hat plus sine theta j hat d theta. So I know already what my integral is going to be over. And lastly, I have that my E, my electric field, is going to be the integral of dE. And since I'm integrating over angle, I just need to figure out what angle I start at and what angle I end at. Well, I'm starting at 0, and I'm ending at 180. So in radians, I'm going to go from 0 to pi. I have my constant term right here, negative lambda over 4 pi epsilon naught r. And then I have all of this left, cosine theta i hat 
plus sine theta j hat d theta. So all of this I can take out of the integral, and I can look just at the integrands of these. So I have negative lambda over 4 pi epsilon naught r, and then I have the integral from 0 to pi of cosine theta d theta i hat plus the integral from 0 to pi of sine theta d theta j hat. Well, now that we have this, right, we can look into our integral tables or however you want to find your integrals. The integral of cosine theta will give me sine theta i hat from 0 to pi. Well, sine of 0 is 0, sine of pi is 0, so I just get 0. Over here, my integral of sine theta will give me negative cosine theta j hat. And so we're going to have a lot of minus signs, so get ready for this one. Right, cosine theta of pi is negative 1. Negative times negative 1 is, we'll just say negative times negative 1. And then I'm subtracting. Cosine theta of 0 is 1, but I have this negative, so I have a negative here times positive 1. But you'll see if we look at this that I have negative times negative is positive, negative times negative is positive, and so all I just get all is just plus 2. So all of this is just plus 2 times j hat. So then my electric field at the end is going to be negative 2 lambda over 4 pi epsilon naught r in the j hat direction. We can, of course, cancel the 2 and the 4, but very often we like the 4 pi epsilon naught because we know that's 9 times 10 to the 9th. So that's how we solve this continuous piece. Thank you.